When I applied for the study abroad program in Wales, I knew that the program would help me grow in numerous aspects of my life. However, I never expected each of the experiences I had to be as profound as they were, nor did I expect to end up with a brand new family by the end of the program. Throughout the experience, we discussed experiential outdoor education, what maximized or minimized our ability to learn during an experience. One of the theorists that we focused on was Kolb. His main focus and theory was of this four-phase cycle of learning. One place where I truly believe I experienced the true full four-step cycle was on our hike up Kader Idris. Phase one is concrete experience. The first half of the hike up Kader Idris, I would say was a significant concrete experience for me. It began with a long stretch of stairs, many, many stairs. During this, my calves began cramping severely and I had a lot of numbness and tingling. These were all things I had experienced before but had yet to experience to this extreme after my surgery about a year and a half ago. In a place where there wasn't much I could do, I stripped off my rain pants, pulled up my leggings, and pulled off my compression sleeves. With the help of John, I was able to adjust my stride so that I wasn't doing a calf raise each time I took a step, but I was still frustrated. As we reached the, as we reached the lake about halfway through the hike, we were able to take a break. This, altogether, is what I would consider to be my concrete experience. Stage two of Kolb's cycle is reflective observation. At the end of my concrete experience, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with John, expressing my frustration as to how my injury has affected my life in so many ways outside of athletics. It was no longer just affecting my ability to play sports, but it was affecting my ability to remain with my friends on a hike, my ability to stay in the moment, my ability to truly enjoy the place where I was at that moment in time. After a bit of conversation, John pointed out to me that a lot of people with my condition stopped being active. They don't even attempt to partake in the surgery, they just minimize their activities to lessen their pain. And yet there I was, headed up my second of the three highest peaks in Wales, with a 40 to 50 pound backpack on my back. I was there doing what many others couldn't, and I needed to give myself more credit. As we reached the lake, I continued to reflect. The adjustment in my stride that John had suggested was incredibly helpful. It was something that I would need to continue for the rest of the trip. Additionally, my fear of being left behind or judged for my slow pace due to my legs was lifted. When I caught back up with the group, everyone was just happy to see me. Sid already knew what was going on and that I would need Advil and already had it out for me. They were in no way judging me, but rather they were there to support me and were just hoping that the symptoms that I was experiencing could be resolved. Stage three of Kolb's cycle is abstract conceptualization. I think in many ways this co-occurred with my stage two. John helped me to find a why. He helped put me back in the moment, enjoying the place where I was with the people I was with. He helped me realize that it was a supportive, judgment-free zone where I was there to grow as an individual. He helped me realize how much I could learn about myself as I hiked up a mountain. I was able to enjoy the moment with my friends. I grew more in those two or three hours hiking up the side of Kader Idris in my belief in myself and in my confidence than I have in my year and a half post-surgery. I found confidence and I was finally able to credit myself for everything that I've accomplished and fought through. Stage four of Kolb's cycle is planned active experimentation. In this experience, this was the next half of the hike. I didn't rush myself, but I concentrated on the way that I stepped. I was able to reach the summit without the significant amount of pain that I had previously been in. This active experimentation continued even further as I realized the compression sleeve was hurting a lot more than it was helping. For a next hike up Snowden, I chose not to wear the compression sleeves, but instead taped myself as I typically do before competing in games. This attention to detail allowed me to remain more in the moment and to have a better overall experience, giving me another concrete experience to grow from. While this was one singular experience that I think shows the four steps of Kolb's cycle while I was in Wales, I also think that in many ways the entirety of my experience in Wales will forever be a concrete experience that I'm learning from. I participated in more things outside of my comfort zone, made new friends in a wonderful new place, and I learned a lot about myself. The second phase of Kolb's cycle is reflective observation. So here, as a participant of the trip, I'm reflecting on what was successful and what wasn't. As I reflect on each day, I find successes and failures, all of which we learned from. I think one of the major successes that we experienced within the trip was our cohesiveness as a group. Everyone there was all in for one another, whether it was encouraging Maddie as she could rappel down the face of a cliff, or supporting Sid as she overcame overwhelming fear from the previous experience. 
We supported people as they overcame fears of scrambling headed into Pavlon's cave, and I feel incredibly supported as I fought through numbness, pain, and tingling during our hiking, especially on our way up Kader Idris. Even with the help of Toma, we were able to reflect on the slate mine experience with Jamie, which was nobody's favorite. Jamie, in our eyes, failed, but we learned how crucial it was to have somebody leading the activity that we were participating in that has passion and excitement for what they're doing. It made us appreciate the rest of the leaders that were brought in even more and allowed us to reflect as a group as to how lucky we truly were to have Tomo, John, Ed, and Jack as our guides throughout the trip. Still the same city I've been used to And all the reckless things that we do Keep us young, they're good signs, they're good signs Take a little more if you need it Voices of the night won't mislead it The tide pulls me in but it takes slow Here's to the nights we let go And I'm hoping that they figure out It's all about the scenery along the route No fears and no problems Moments are so kind, are so kind. Kolb's third phase is the abstract conceptualization. So what's the interpretation? What's the big picture? What's the why? I think the best way to honestly summarize both steps two and three of this trip is maybe in a list of advice for the next group. together, cook together. Start it on the first night. You don't need to go out to eat, but being together and sharing a meal is the first step in caring for each other in a familiar and unthreatening way. This set us up as a group as one of the most important parts of our trip. The very first night we were there, we cooked, and then we headed off to the friend's arms. It allowed us to bond as a group. A little money saved for drinks later on, we celebrated making it to that point. We celebrated being together. We relaxed in an atmosphere where we all felt comfortable. As we continued to cook and eat together throughout the trip, it allowed everyone to contribute, allowed us to save a little money, and allowed us to spend a lot of time together. Whether it was meal prep, cleanup, and most importantly, of course, eating and sharing the meal we made together. And you don't feel nothing bad. Stay in the moment. The videos and pictures that you take will last as memories for a lifetime. But never let being on your phone take you out of the moment either. Find five minutes of peace to reflect when you can on the place that you are in with the people you are with because you'll never be in that time, in that space, in that place with those people ever again. The day that we met with the video team, the uncomfortableness of staging videos took people out of the moment and all they wanted to do was enjoy where they were. Be in the moment because being in the moment on this trip is the most crucial part of this experience and no one will ever punish you for it. Prioritize it. Big plan and you gotta move and I don't feel laughing at all and you can't feel laughing small Don't be afraid to ask for help. You will grow more as a person and your group will grow to be better people when you learn you can work together and support each other. Most people want to help you with what they can and they often don't know what to do to help. So ask for help, work together and you'll go farther than you ever would alone.
Your trip will be tiring. There will be false peaks on hikes, but keep climbing. The peak will be more than worth it, but the journey to the peak is just as important. Have fun with the people around you. Play games, laugh, and enjoy the walk up. Don't be stuck on the end goal. Enjoy the journey and every activity that you could participate in. This trip will go by faster than you could have ever imagined, so embrace every moment. And try to learn this one. How many pink elephants are there on top of Snowden? It's 10, by the way. And as silly as it sounds, number five, go out together. Go out as one big, goofy group of Americans. The plume, the friend's arms, the curious as we like to call it, and karaoke at Lucifer's are always good. Go to Talk to anyone and everyone you can. Being together in a new place lets you meet new friends and new people, and lets you embrace a new culture. Embrace that. Kolbs' fourth phase is active experimenting. During this phase, the participant must plan and then act to create their next concrete experience. While with all my heart, I wish I was headed back to Wales right this instant, I learned a lot that I plan to apply to both my upcoming athletic seasons and into each adventure I continue to go on. Whether it's team dinners, encouraging people to push themselves and one another outside of their comfort zones, to organizing team building experiences that are similar to those we participated in in Wales, the idea of bonding through adversity is one that I will always reflect on truly understanding after my experience in Wales. So cheers to you Tomo, cheers to you John, cheers to you Jack, and cheers to you Ed. And cheers to each and every one of you that made this experience what it was. People make the place, and in a great place with even greater people, no wonder I found my new family. Oh, oh, oh.